To follow along with this video, you're first going to need to be comfortable doing some basic things in SketchUp, such as using the inference engine to draw some very basic shapes and uh, to encourage some very simple inference lines. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing is you should know where to adjust settings, such as changing your units and disabling things like length snapping. And uh, finally, it's probably good to know where some edge settings are underneath view, edge style, profiles. You know, for this one, I'll turn my profiles on just to do something a little bit different. Mainly what I want to focus on in this video is numeric input and shortcuts. Now, I'll, I'll be elaborating on a few of these other things I just briefly talked about, but um, that's going to be the main topic, numeric input and inferencing. So SketchUp is really designed to be very much like drawing on a napkin. You don't really need to think about your sizes. You don't really need to think about scale. Just, just as when you're sketching on a napkin, you're not breaking out the ruler and making sure everything is just right. So, you know, that's, that's how SketchUp is built. But it's also built to be as detailed and accurate as you want to make it. And it's really easy to jump between the two. Now I've just been drawing my shapes arbitrarily. In this video, I'm going to use a lot of numeric input. Now, order is very important, the order in which you do things. And uh, I'll explain that as I go about these exercises. But to start, I'm going to grab the pencil tool. And just like before, I'll just click a spot and uh, move my mouse around. And I can see that I've got that rubber banding effect. So visually, I'm, I'm changing the direction that this line is going. So that is in the red direction, but it's, it's going from left to right. Now, if I were to click, that tells SketchUp to set the point there. But you don't have to click. You can also type. Now, before I actually type, um, take a look down here. In the lower right-hand corner, that's what's called the value control box, and it changes depending on what you're doing. Now, since I'm drawing a length, it says length, but keep an eye on that because depending on the tool, depending on the operation, that will change. But um, it's interesting because if you look down there now, I can see this shape is about 25 feet. Now I can be very careful and try to try to get it to land on 25 feet before I click, or you can just type 25 and hit enter on your keyboard. Now you'll see these these um, these keystrokes as I press them, and the, the enter key enter key is kind of that little um, funny arrow. So that's what that means. But more importantly, it set that at exactly 25 feet. If I want to draw a direction down 10 feet, I'll type 10 feet and hit enter. Now this part is pretty cool and uh, a very important convention. So going in this direction, I'm going to type 20 feet and hit enter. But before I do anything else, before I literally do anything else, touch any keys, move my mouse, uh, anything, I will type a new number. So maybe I don't want that to be 20 feet, maybe I want it to be 60 feet. So I'll type 60 feet and hit enter that just shot off the screen. Maybe I want to see what uh, 100 millimeters looks like. Or how about uh, 10 or 100 centimeters? And notice I'm typing the CM. Uh, I can do 80 inches and enter. So you can mix and match. The default unit is feet. And that's that setting I just did right when I started this video. So if I just type a number like 30 without a unit, it defaults to feet. So. I just created 30 feet, that top line is 25 feet, but what's very important, and I hope you're not moving your mouse as uh, you're following along, if you move your mouse, that starts a new line. See what happened? As soon as I touched my mouse, it started drawing a new line. So now, let's say, oh, I actually wanted that line to be 25 feet after all, so I'll type 25 feet and hit enter. Well, it applied that to the new line, not to the line that I just did. You know what, that's worth doing again. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase all of this. Click to start, type a number, 25, enter. Now I, I hit the little feet mark, I didn't need to because that's my default unit. Before I do anything else, I can continue to type numbers and, uh, and I can see that changed. 15, enter, 100 inches, enter. I think you can even do fractions. Let's try uh, 10, feet, three quarters, or three fifth inches. Hey, it did it, so kind of neat. You can really get creative. But as soon as I move my mouse, now I'm drawing a new line. So any numbers I apply will be 
um, set to this line. For example, that's my direction. So if I type 10 and enter, it just draws a 10 foot line in that direction. Go ahead and play around with that. And um, very shortly here, I'll move on to a few more exciting things than just lines. And uh, you know what, why not? Let's do that right now. So I'm going to ahead, go ahead and erase those. And uh, I'm going to draw the letter F again. You know, I did this before in another video. It's a pretty ugly F, but it's an F nonetheless. And how about, we'll make that line kind of curved. It's also kind of interesting that uh, it might be useful to make a coplanar surface. I've talked about how when you make a coplanar connection, that surface just automatically is created. So with that selected, um, I'm going to grab, or with that drawn rather, I'm going to grab the arc tool. And I'll click once here, and I'll click once here. And I want this to be um, exactly uh, a half circle. Now it'll snap for mine. I can see that little snap just by moving my mouse. And I'm not getting my little tooltip pop-ups. You might be. I hope you are because I think uh, you should be seeing a pop-up that says half circle or something like that. But um, for whatever reason, I'm not. But again, I can click with my mouse to give this visual input and take advantage of that snap. Or I can enter a number and now, look down here, it says bulge. Before it said distance, now it says bulge because that's what it wants to know one way or another. It wants to know it with the mouse or it wants to know it with numeric. So for whatever reason, let's make that three feet. Well, that's what that looks like. Let's make that one feet. And just like before, I can give this all kinds of units and all kinds of numbers before I do anything else. Important convention. Um, that is with the arc tool. Let's grab the circle tool. And uh, my circle tool looks a little goofy because I was playing around here. So, you know, now's a good time to talk about why does it look weird? Because I gave it a, um, a configuration setting before I did anything uh, to draw it. And that's another kind of neat thing you can do. So you do that with the circle by typing a number and the letter S. So before I do anything, all I've done is grab the circle, just kind of move my mouse around, and I will type 24s and hit enter. That tells it to do a 24-sided circle. I've mentioned that SketchUp is a polygonal modeler. It's not a true vector modeler in terms of mathematical curves. Everything is segments and surfaces and faces, including circles. So 24 is the default side. That's usually pretty good. I mean, it'll look like a circle. Um, if you really want it to be you know, smooth, you can type 48s and hit enter. Um, you could type 300s, but that will make your model really inefficient really quickly. So I'm going to go back to 24s, hit enter, and uh, I'll draw a circle. And I did that just by clicking on my mouse. Well, as you may guess, you can click to start. Hey, now down here it says radius. That's kind of neat. So just like before, I can give it a number, 5 feet, and there we go. I've got a 5-foot radius. Now, I'm going to try an experiment here. I'm going to try... 3D, uh, nope, that doesn't work. I thought I could trick it and maybe do diameter, but it's not quite that smart. So you get the idea. In any tool, you can give it the number of um, sides. You can give it the distance, you know, either visually or by clicking. And uh, as we play around with some more tools, you'll even see some little, um, some other little kind of tips and tricks that you can do. And I'll be sure to mention those as uh, they arise. But you know what? I'm going to go back to the arc tool. And uh, this time I'll draw an arc from here to here. I'll just visually click because I don't want to, uh, you know, don't really know what that bulge would even be. So I'll go ahead and click here. Just like with the circle tool, I can type 12s and hit enter. That gave me 12 sides. Uh, let's try 3s and enter. Well, there's a three-sided arc. For whatever reason, you might want it to look like that. I could do 2s, and that's really a triangle. Now, if you're really paying attention, you'll notice something I did there. I did that after I drew it. You can do that before or after when you're setting the number of sides to either an arc, which is, oh, my mouse broke, there it goes. My, uh, the arc, which is there, the circle, which is there, and the polygon, which is there. Those are the three shapes that you can give a um, sides by typing a number and the letter S. So sometimes the, uh, the numeric input is really important. For example, when I drew that top line and I moved my mouse and then all of a sudden I was drawing a new line. 
Sometimes um, the numeric input can be before or after, such as with the circles. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and select all of that, hit delete, and I'll do it again. So I can grab the circle. I can just visually draw that. After I've drawn it, I can change the number of sides. So maybe I'm making a geo model. Geo models, uh, such as uh, models for Google Earth, really need to be efficient. So if this was a pillar in a Google model, well, depending on the scale, you know, I could maybe even make that six sides. If it's something off in the distance, that'll probably look fine, especially with some uh, creative texturing. Um, if this is a very detailed model, I'd probably make that at least 24 sides or maybe even 48 sides. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and set this back to uh, 12 sides. Well, let's go down back to 6, 6S. Six the reason I wanted to do that is because any subsequent circles that you draw will keep that last number that, I, uh, that you specified. So I could go back to my pencil tool, draw some shapes. I can go to my rectangle tool, draw some shapes. And uh, I can go back to my circle tool, and I'm still drawing hexagons. So just keep that in mind, because you might, um, you might make it a three-sided circle, and then wonder why your circle all of a sudden looks like Doritos. So yes, there is such a thing as three-sided circles only in SketchUp. I'm going to go ahead and hit 24S and hit Enter to turn that back. Notice that one changed. And I'll show you a third way to change some of these settings. And I'm going to delete everything, go back to my circle, draw one there. I'll draw one over here. And for good measure, I'll draw one down here and give it numeric input. I'll make that a, a five foot radius. So if you want to go back and change it after the fact, for example, this first one, if I wanted to change the number of sides on that, or if I have an arc, such as this one. Oops, hey there, I forgot to change my arc from before. Good example, so I'll type 12S. But let's say you want to go back um, and change something. Well, if you just drew it, you can, you can sit here all day and change the number of sides until it looks good. If you want to go back and change something you drew before, you can do that. You need to grab your select tool. Actually, you don't need to grab the select tool, but uh, force of habit, I like to do that. And you need to right click on it. This part gets a little tricky because there's two types of elements. There's, uh, or two types of geometries, I should say. There's more than two types of elements. More on that later. A uh, little hint is components and groups. But for geometry, there's only surfaces and edges. So I can right click on either one of those to bring up some details about that. If I right click on this surface and go to Entity Info, I can see my Entity Info. There's um, my front um, color or front texture and back texture. We'll deal with that later. I can see my area. You know, that's pretty useful just when you need to uh, find out what the area is. I can also see the layer that that is applied to. Now, we haven't done anything with layers. We'll get to that some other time. You also have this little black and white icon here, and that changes. Uh, it, it expands your dialog and gives you a few more settings. Um, for example, you may or may not want this to receive or cast shadows. Well, here's where you can change that. We'll be looking at that later on. But this is the settings for the surface entity. It doesn't, or it says face. Now, I've mentioned this before. Technically a face because a surface can be curved. Um, we'll get to that eventually, but that is a face. These are the info details for that face. Let's click in white space. Something I've told you to get used to doing. With this entity window open, now I don't need to right click anymore. I can just select stuff. And whatever I have selected, I can see the details. So now that I've got that edge selected, I've got a couple different things here. Still got layer, I've still got my radius, and I've got the segments. Now, can I change the radius right here? I don't know, let's find out. Hey, I can, that's pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't honestly didn't, didn't know I could do that. So you can change the radius. I can also change the number of segments. So I'll type 48, hit enter. It's so smooth you can't really tell. Let's go to 12, enter. There we go. So I can change some of these geometries after the fact. Now, can I change the area? I know for a fact you used to not be able to do this. I'll be really happy if you can. Oh, you cannot. So it'd be, I'm trying to type 60, can't do it. So, but you can change some entities like the uh, segments. 
and the radius. Let's go ahead and uh, delete these. The last thing I'll talk about, we'll jump into 3D because 2D gets boring after a while, is the circle and the polygon. Very simple, really easy to understand uh, when I show you one simple thing. So with the circle, I'll, I'll grab it. And before I even start drawing, I'm going to type 12S and hit enter. That'll give me a 12-sided circle. I'll go ahead and draw. Looks good. I will grab the polygon tool. Now it's defaulting to six sides, just like before. I'm going to type 12S and hit enter. Just draw it, roughly kind of eyeing it so it's the same size. You might wonder, well, what's the difference between these two? Not really anything until we move into 3D. Now, you know, there might be something. Let's try this. Nope, okay, I thought I, thought I could select individual segments. I cannot quite yet, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump to my isometric view by clicking here, and uh, I'm going to grab the push-pull tool. Now, we haven't even looked at that. Hopefully, you've discovered it on your own. That is really the, uh, you know, the bread and butter tool of SketchUp, and I'm going to click once to start, and click once to finish. You can also click and drag, which I'm doing over here. I've told you, not, you know, not a really good habit. I tend to like the, uh, the click release click method, but you know, just know that you can do it. But regardless, here is the difference between circles and polygons. Polygon has an edge at each verti vertex, vertices, whatever those are called, and a circle um, has smoothed edges. So let's talk about surfaces and faces. This top entity, this top entity here is a face. And you can tell that by right clicking on it and going to entity info. And I can see that it says face right there. This right here is a surface. There you go. So I use those interchangeably, a little bit incorrectly, just out of habit. A surface is composed of multiple faces that have been smoothed over. Now over here, we've just got a bunch of faces. And you can see that changing right there. Now, these geometries are still editable, um, even though you can't see those edges, they're editable. One thing you'll find out right away is you cannot push-pull a surface. You can push-pull a face. So over here, I can push-pull those faces on that uh, extruded polygon, but I can't on this circle here. Really, really good thing to know is where your hidden geometry is. And it's actually under view, hidden geometry. There it is. I get camera and view mixed up, but view, hidden geometry, and you'll see dashed lines. So now not only can I see the dashed geometries of this extruded or this push-pulled circle, I can interact with them. I can select them independently and I can push-pull them. And if I go back here and turn off hidden geometry, they go away, and now I can no longer do that. So go ahead and play around with those. Um, when you see those dashed lines, don't confuse it with, um, there's a newer one in here. Uh, here it is, this back edges. So that allows you to essentially see through your model uh, and see dashed lines where the back edges are. It's kind of like x-ray mode, which is right here. That allows you to see all the way through your model. So. Just don't get those confused. I'll talk more about those in detail, but um, let's turn off that. Oh, it's already off. But that should give you uh, a few more tidbits of information to play around with, and um, I encourage you to do that until the next video, in which we will ramp it up even more.